Who would do this to these animals? The man wrinkled his nose in disgust as he walked past several clear glass tubes. Each was filled with a green liquid. Animals of different species were placed inside, wires and tubes coming out of their bodies. There were about 20 species just in this row alone. What was worse was that the animals were still alive. In their tubes, he could see them squirming, as if they were begging for death. The man had seen enough and had left the room. It disgusted him that such a place existed. Experimentation on animals had been prohibited for so long that he couldn't even remember. He upheld that law with a strongly clenched fist. In his company, no one would dare defy that law. There must be some kind of rogue faction that's responsible. A couple of lowly scum who were trying to get away with murder. He would see about that. The facility was primarily quiet, despite the loose animals running around. It didn't make him any happier that some of the animals were free. All of these creatures were just completed experiments. They had gone through the process the others had, and that wasn't even the end of it. He knew the mind track of the people in charge of this place would see to it that the animals undergo further experimentation. He would rather see everything here destroyed than to allow this illegal place to keep going through production. He had no idea where the people in charge of this place were. He had his suspicions that they were killed by something. He wanted to think good riddance, but he wouldn't get all the answers he's looking for from the corpses. So he pressed on, trying to find any signs of life outside the animals. His gun wasn't the best, but it did him good. The animals fell down quickly as he shot them, and they became hard, stiff as a board. He walked up to a door. It had a shining blue light. He stepped closer to it, and it automatically opened, allowing him to access inside. He was immediately repulsed by what he saw. A large winged animal lay in the room. He put his back on the wall and readied his gun. He looked over to the corner. He waited for the creature to do something. But it remained still, almost as if it was dead. But that was proven wrong when the creature moved its tail. The creature was covered in a purple skin, hard and thick as anything, yet it looked charred and scrapped. His former comrade must have been responsible. He cracked a small smile at this. He had lost contact with the member after member of his team, and part of him was worried that he would be the only one remaining to complete the mission. It gave him a sense of hope that at least one person was still alive. The man moved along the shadows, practically hugging the walls so that the purple beast didn't see him. It might be wounded, but he wasn't going to take any chances with that thing. He continued to move down the hallway, shooting down any experimented animal that would attack him. Many were insectoid in appearance, spiked and clawed. Some hung from ceilings to attack, while others were more bold and tried to stomp on him. They were nothing compared to the winged animal he snuck by earlier. Sometime later, he found himself in front of an elevator. The number didn't look familiar to him. He knew that there were different levels of the facility, but this one? It was different. He narrowed his eyes and then widened them. He realized seeing an unlabeled area of the facility's map, one that didn't seem to have any apparent passageway to it. He reached over to open the doors when something struck him from behind. Startled, the man positioned himself for a fight and looked for his target. A group of small spiky creatures were crawling up towards him, their eyes glowing with murderous intent. He scowled and began to shoot them one by one. One of them jumped on top of him and knocked him to the ground. His gun went skidding across the floor. He cursed himself and got back to his feet. He ran towards his gun, but a large group of the spiky animals crawled over it, preventing access. The man took a few steps back. He gritted his teeth. If he had to fight with his fists, he would. When one of the animals lunged for him, he brought back his fist and punched. He made direct contact with the head. The animal crashed to the ground, but it wasn't finished. It crawled at a quickened pace towards him. He picked up the broken beam made of thick steel and swung it down on the creature. Its body exploded with a disgusting green coloration, which now stained the ground. He stared at the other creatures and lifted up the beam, preparing to make them meet the same fate. He then heard something drip loudly. 
He looked over at the fallen animal. A yellowish substance was oozing out of his body. He flinched and it almost felt like throwing up. The substance, gelatinous in its structure, moved out of the animal, making squishing noises that made it sway across the hard ground. He tried to strike it, but the strange thing took to the air, floating just out of his reach and yet moving ominously closer. He didn't know what it intended to do, but he sensed this thing was dangerous. The gelatinous yellow thing moved in quickly upon him suddenly. The man moved to swing the pole at it, but it simply dodged. Before he could react, the thing slammed against his body and he found himself on his back once more. He tried pulling the creature off, but he was unable to get a grip. He writhed in pain as the creature seemed to melt its way inside his body. Soon, he could no longer see the creature, but he felt immense pain inside and he clung his head tightly. He got up from the ground and walked weakly forward. He looked at the elevator. His eyes blinked as his vision began to get blurry. He stumbled towards the elevator's doors, which were now open, but he fell down on his stomach, his hand just barely reaching the inside of the elevator. In his agony, he heard footsteps coming his way. He craned his head up to see who it was. The man widened his eyes. He knew who this man was. It was one of his comrades back at work. He trained with him before they went their separate ways. He must be here to help him. He rolled himself onto his back and reached out toward his comrade. But the newcomer simply stared at him. The man withdrew his hand, confused by his comrade's behavior. But then he took a good look at his eyes. The irises and pupils had in a split second disappeared, making the eyes look like white marbles. Do not worry, the comrade spoke. His voice was icy cold, to such a degree it seemed impossible for a human. Everything is going well to our expectations. I must tend to my own work, but do not despair. You will soon not feel the pain. The man's eyes shut tightly and he screamed loudly. He collapsed on the ground, and the yellow creature re-emerged and began to cover his entire body. It devoured him, eating through his armor and suit. Soon, all that remained was his armor, laying on the ground stained with blood and yellow stuff. Minutes later, a shadow loomed over the pile of purple spiked animals. They stopped where they were and looked up. The glow from their eyes dissipated almost immediately, they moved away cautiously as something reached down. A hand covered in armor grabbed the gun and lifted it up. The animals moved even further as a newcomer inspected the gun. In the reflection, the face could be seen. It looked just like the same man from before, only with solid white eyes. It took a few steps, some yellow substance dripping off. This soon stopped. It saw something move in the corner of its eyes. It looked over and saw a brief image of someone dressed in yellow and red armor. The clone gave a soft scowl and uttered an icy phrase. Samus Aran. Thank you for sticking around to the end. If you enjoyed today's story, don't forget to leave a like. And if you want to hear more stories like it, don't forget to subscribe and click that bell icon. That way you'll never miss a story. Oh, and if you haven't already, don't forget to follow me on Twitter so you can keep up with the latest goings on on the channel.